Welcome to a report on the DB4 flight test. Pomeroy Kerman, who you heard there, was the pilot. Unlike our other flight test footage so far, uh, this report will be edited because the full length of the flight was too long to uh, fit into a reasonable video. And so this video will contain the key details of the flight without, uh, without belaboring the longer portions of the mission. So here we see Promory Kerman getting uh, set up in his cockpit. The purpose of the mission, the purpose of the DB-4 nicknamed the DART, was to break Mach 3. It had uh, two jet engines, General Electric F404 GE402 turbofans with uh, 80 kilonewtons each. And then a single EADS Astrium Estus engine. Uh, producing 30 kilonewtons. And so here we see Promoy Kerman lighting the engines. Lift off for the DB4 Dart was around 110 meters per second. Very quick, but for something with such a small wing and thin wing. Not surprising. After getting his gear up, Pomeroy made his way towards the ocean, making the turn to first 315 degrees and then 225 degrees. And you can see that here. The aircraft climbed fairly smoothly. After one minute, it was past three kilometers at 211 meters per second. After two minutes, it was past 6,500 meters and uh, 209 meters per second. And it continued climbing from there. Uh, the planned level off point was 14.3 uh, kilometers. And at that point, Pomeroy was scheduled to break the sound barrier and then continue to uh, gain velocity. Uh, with the target of Mach 3. Going forward, the EDB does intend to go into space. <laughs> with all of this being necessary research flights only. It's worth pointing out that the record for a self-launched mixed engine aircraft, uh, in other words jet and rocket, is uh, held by the NF-104A uh, in 1963. Robert W. Smith brought that aircraft to 120,800 feet or about 36,800 meters and so eventually that will be the record we are trying to break. After all the um, X-15 which of course traveled higher was dropped by a B-52 and was not self-launched. Incidentally, the record for an air-breathing jet was uh, with a MiG-25M, or otherwise designated a YE-266, flown by Alexander uh, Fedotov, and that flew in 1977 to a maximum height of 37,650 meters, or 123,520 feet. <laughs> In both cases, those were those were not uh, level flight records. Those were spike ups that were not sustainable. The record for a level flight by a winged aircraft is held by an unmanned vehicle. Uh, the NASA Helios reached uh, 96,865 feet, or 29 kilometers, 29.5 kilometers and that was the record for horizontal flight. The intention with the DB-4 is to reach a horizontal flight record for the EDB, but we will not be able to pass the record for the Helios. And here you see the aircraft uh, above 14.6 kilometers and uh, well past the sound barrier now uh, about 1.25 Mach. Still on its jets. 
Of course, the SS engine is fairly weak, and so it is a borderline matter whether it can actually propel this aircraft any faster than the jets, or whether it will fall short, and that is one thing that uh, EDB is testing. And so you see here the aircraft uh, continuing higher and faster. The jets themselves are limited. They are unable to pass Mach 2.85. At, uh, at, at that velocity, they will overheat. And so the jets will actually have to be turned off once they uh, begin overheating and it is at that point that the Estes engine will be turned on. The Estes engine had uh, more than six minutes worth of fuel, just a little bit above six minutes worth of fuel. It is in fact uh, quite possible that this flight might have ended quite differently if it had only been carrying three minutes worth of fuel for the Estes, um, but uh, we'll get to that uh, when it comes. Here we see the DB4 passing Mach 2 and Parmoy Kerman reporting that in with the altitude at 16.5 kilometers as you can see. Here we were past 9 minutes into the mission and everything was going fairly smoothly except that Pomeroy did report uh, some difficulty controlling the aircraft. Uh, there really was no ability for him to increase the pitch to any significant degree so uh, he was simply riding it uh, trying to see how high he can go and indeed he uh, got quite high as as we see the the velocity passing passing Mach uh, 2.6 and there he lights the SS engine as the jets are uh, beginning to overheat And then at Mach uh, 2.7, Pomeroy turned off the jets and went simply with the SS engine attempting to surpass Mach 3. Unfortunately, that was uh, his report noting that, that the aircraft was actually, actually decelerating. You can see him trying to adjust pitch, but it simply isn't working very well for him. And so uh, he simply decided to ride it out as uh, his velocity was decreasing, but his altitude was still going up. As the aircraft uh, decreased uh, in velocity to a safe level, he relit the jets in order to get an extra boost from them. But soon after that, he would have to shut them down. Again, the jets uh, cannot go faster than Mach 2.85. He does push them to the limits. But in frustration, uh, it was to no avail. Mission Control tried to keep him calm during this, but he was clearly frustrated. The goal at this point, the secondary goal of the mission, was to attain an altitude record. But once again, his uh, lack of pitch control seemed to frustrate that. Pomeroy managed to keep it steady and to continue climbing, but he uh, could not uh, increase his pitch angle to any substantial degree. At one point, he even uh, lost the ability to keep his nose up, as you can see here. And only with a brief relight of the jet engines did he manage to uh, regain a positive pitch angle and to continue climbing. After conferring with Mission Control, he decided for an uh, altitude target of 25 kilometers, that is 82,000 feet. 
and unlike uh, previous altitude records he would not be spiking up to it he would actually be flying level and there you see 24.9 and then 25 kilometers. He reached 25 kilometers, reported that in, and then just at that point the SS engine ran out. Now in theory he could have simply uh, lit the jets in order to maintain level flight, but the decision was made that he was uh, too far out and that he should uh, turn back. And here is where things started to go wrong as this turn took an obscene amount of time with the aerodynamic surfaces unable to uh, turn the aircraft uh, t uh, quickly enough. And you can see a very high, very high levels of pressure on the aircraft during this turn. And so that combination made it very difficult to maneuver it. In fact, it took uh, more than two minutes for the aircraft to turn around. It began, it reached its peak altitude of 25 kilometers at 16 minutes and 40 seconds into the flight. At that point, it was traveling 846 meters per second or 1,892 1, miles per hour. Here you see it uh, finally reaching its uh, target heading of 45 degrees at about 20 minutes into the flight. So uh, actually more than uh, 3 minutes after it began its turn. And uh, here it is traveling at roughly Mach 1. So a lot of speed was uh, bled off during that turn. And that was a key mistake in this. Also a large amount of altitude was lost as it uh, dipped to 13.7 kilometers by 20 minutes and that uh, ended up being detrimental to its uh, fuel situation. Nevertheless at this point uh, Pomeroy Kerman was not aware of any difficulties. Uh, he was under the impression that he was much closer to base than he actually was and so he set the aircraft into a cruising speed and uh, sort of coasted in at about uh, 10 kilometers in altitude fairly standard cruising altitude here maximum velocity during the mission by the way was uh, uh, 877 meters per second just shy of Mach 3 and uh, that would be 1,961 miles per hour, which was reached at an altitude of 20.7 kilometers. As he continued in, Pomeroy began to worry as he had uh, very poor visibility at his altitude and he was unable to see the west coast. That led him to mention his fuel situation to Mission Control. They were uncertain what to do about it and so they conferred while uh, he continued on in. Here he decided to gain some altitude in an effort to improve his, his uh, fuel efficiency, but uh, it was... It was unfortunately already too late for that as he was already into his reserves and uh, with very little fuel to spare. Obviously with the wing configuration of this plane, uh, even though it's now much lighter with uh, low fuel load remaining, uh, it really isn't meant for gliding and uh, did not have a very good chance of making it back to base without engine power. We'll turn to a map here and at uh, T plus 31 minutes and 45 seconds this was the location of the DB4 and as you can see uh, quite far away from from Vandenberg Air Force Base and the uh, west coast of California 
uh, really he was nowhere near where he needed to be and of course uh, that was because he went so fast on the journey out and uh, did not have the same kind of speed coming back in. It's possible that if he had maintained altitude uh, he would have been able to uh, keep up his velocity uh, above Mach 2 and that would have probably been the most efficient way to return. However, once he lost altitude, it would have taken uh, more engine power and more fuel to gain altitude back. And so it was... And so as he uh, ended up having under 1% of his total kerosene left, uh, there was really... There was really no choice except to attempt to ditch into the ocean. And so that decision was made roughly 32 minutes into the flight. But as this aircraft is not much of a glider, it uh, really cannot maintain a uh, level attitude without a significant speed. And so that was a huge flaw in attempting a splashdown. But there was really no choice. At this point, Pomeroy was advised to bail out. But uh, as you can see here, he seemed to continue bringing the aircraft down. And uh, the onboard camera even shows that he uh, dropped the landing gear in an attempt to uh, cushion his landing, though where the effectiveness of that move is uncertain. It's worth remembering at this point that Kerbals are taught in flight school to, above all else, preserve their cockpit, and uh, they are not instructed to bail out, and so it is uh, very much against the tendencies of a Kerbal to bail out, uh, unfortunately. And there we see the, the end of Pomeroy Kerman's fuel as the engines for the DB4 were completely out of kerosene. It should be pointed out now that of course what we have here is a simulated view and uh, this is based on all the data that uh, Mission Control had at their disposal to reconstruct what happened. Uh, so we do not know what happened to Pomeroy himself. All we know is what happened to the aircraft based on the data. As you see here, uh, contact with the water. The voice you heard was uh, Mission Control trying to ascertain whether Pomeroy had bailed out, but there was no, no word back. The splashdown speed was uh, negative 20 meters per second vertical, 65 meters per second horizontal. Current status is that the search helicopters have located the landing gear for the aircraft, but not the wreckage of the aircraft itself. So Pomeroy Kerman is listed as missing in action. And uh, with that, this is the EDB signing off.